Is the screen and audio okay? Let's uh, just a moment. Giuseppe, I don't, I can't find the record button. So, uh, just audio moment. okay? Just a moment. Yeah. I, I can, can hear you. you. Oh, thank you. you. You're right. Where is it? <clears throat> so, uh, just a moment. <clears throat> Chiederei alla regia, non vediamo il bottone record sulla barra di zoom. Potreste aiutare un attimo? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Ah, okay, good. It's a miracle. <laughs> it reproduces. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, we are ready. Sorry for this time. So, ito san please start. Oh, thank you, Chairman, for my introduction. Uh, okay, I would like to start the presentation. I'm Taco Ito from Keio University. So, I'm going to talk about augmented Lagrangian methods in editing machines. This work was done in collaboration with Otaro Tanahashi and Shu Tanaka. I'd like to begin with outline. When solving combinatorial optimization problems with constraints using editing machines, the solution accuracy depends on the hyperparameters, which are generally difficult to tune. Here, we introduced the augmented Lagrangian method for symmetric annealing. And we count the number of updates of hyperparameters until we obtain a feasible solution. As a result, the number of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method was fewer than the impurity method as shown in this figure. And the objective functions in augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method were about the same. At this slide, I would like to talk about what combinatorial optimization programs with constraints are. Most combinatorial optimization programs have constraints. When the objective function f of x and the equality constraints g of x equal to c, the following equation is solved by penalty method. Given the equality constraints, formulate combinatorial optimization programs with constraints into combinatorial optimization programs not with constraints. When solving combinatorial optimization programs with constraints generally, the penalty method is well used. At this slide, I'd like to talk about the background of my presentation. When solving combinatorial optimization problems with constraints using editing machines, solution accuracy depends on the hyperparameters. To illustrate this, I'll use the case of solving traveling system problem by penalty method as an example. The Hamiltonian of traveling system program is expressed like this. Please note mu in red. The solution accuracy depends on the value of mu. For example, if the value of mu is too small, a feasible solution cannot be obtained as shown in the left figure. But conversely, if the value of mu is too large, a feasible solution can be obtained, but the solution accuracy is worse as shown in the right figure. To obtain the optimal solution as shown in the middle figure, 
it is important to chew hyperparameters adaptively. Recently, Tanahashi and Tanaka introduced the augmented Lagrangian method for quantum needing. As a result, the numbers of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method is fewer than that in penalty method. And the objective functions in augmented Lagrangian method is better than penalty method. But problems with complicated constraints were not handled. So our goal is to examine the performance of augmented Lagrangian method for symmetric annealing, including problems with complicated constraints. At this slide, I'd like to talk about the difference between augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method. Look at this figure. This is the trajectory of hyperparameters consisting of lambda and mu. Here, mu has both the augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method, while lambda has only augmented Lagrangian method. Regarding this figure, green area indicates the area that satisfies constraints corresponding to ground state of aging model. On the other hand, white area indicates the area that does not satisfy constraints. In penalty method, only one dimension is explored as shown in blue line. That is because the penalty method has hyperparameter only mu. On the other hand, in augmented Lagrangian method, two-dimensional space can be explored, as shown in red line. So the search area expands at augmented Lagrangian method. Therefore, it is expected to find a feasible solution quickly. At this slide, I'd like to talk about penalty method used as a comparison for augmented Lagrangian method. The penalty method is generally used to introduce the constraint to the Hamiltonian. For example, in the case of the Hamilton combinatorial optimization problem presented in this, the Hamiltonian using penalty method is expressed like this. The updating rule for the hyperparameter mu is expressed as follows. Here, k is the numbers of iteration and alpha is the increasing ratio of the value of mu. The updates of hyperparameters are repeated until we obtain a feasible solution. In this case, when the value of mu is too small, it might not obtain a feasible solution. However, when the value of mu is too large, it might obtain a feasible solution, but the objective functions are too large. Next, I'd like to talk about augmented Lagrangian method. Although the augmented Lagrangian method is well used in continuous optimization, we applied augmented Lagrangian method to combinatorial optimization programs which are discrete optimization programs. For example, in the case of the combinatorial optimization program is presented in this, the Hamiltonian using augmented Lagrangian method is expressed like this. The difference between augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method is that in augmented Lagrangian method, these linear terms are added to the Hamiltonian in penalty method. The updating rule for the hyperparameters, such as lambda and mu, is expressed as follows. Regarding the updating rule for lambda, this expectation is calculated using samples in the previous iteration. Here, k is the number of iteration and alpha is the increasing ratio of the viral mu. The update of hyperparameters are repeated until we obtain a feasible solution. At this slide, I would like to talk about calculation flowchart. Please look at this flowchart. Firstly, we decide the initial values of hyperparameters 
and generate the Hamiltonian. Secondly, we solve the Hamiltonian by symmetric unneeding. Thirdly, uh, we check if it is a feasible solution. If we obtain a feasible solution, we finish calculation. On the other hand, a feasible solution cannot be obtained. We update hyperparameters and return to the second step and solve the Hamiltonian by symmetric unneeding again. We repeat this loop until we ob obtain a feasible solution and count this loop. To confirm that augmented Lagrangian method is valid, we compare the number of updates of hyperparameters and the objective functions for augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method. We want the number of updates of hyperparameters to be fewer because the process of solving the Hamiltonian by symmetry unneeding is computationally heavy. We dealt with three problems. First, constraint random cube problem. Second, turbine salesman problem. Third, quadratic assignment problem. At constraint random cube problem, we compare the result of quantum leading and symmetric leading. From this slide onward, I'll show the results. At this slide, I'll show the comparison of symmetric annealing and quantum annealing for constraint random cube program. The objective functions and the constraints of a program are expressed like this. The number of spins is 54, and the constraints vary varying three patterns about this. Here, I explain how the graphs are built. The area to the upper left of the straight line with slope one is the area where augmented Lagrangian method is superior. On the other hand, the area to the lower right of the straight line with slope one is the area is the area the penalty method is superior. However, the opposite is true if we maximize the, the objective functions. Here, I'd, I'd like to talk about the results. Uh, first, uh, I'll compare the objective functions. In quantum learning, augmented Lagrangian method is better than penalty method. In symmetric unneeding, augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method are about the same. Next. I'll compare the number of updates of hyperparameters. In quantum leading, augmented Lagrangian method is better than penalty method. As well as in symmetry annealing, augmented Lagrangian method is better than penalty method. At this right, I'll show the result of constraint random cube program. Comparison was made by varying the number of spins. We generate 10 random programs for 64 spins and 256 spins. The constraints varying the three patterns for the value of B is like this. So please look at the left figure. The objective functions in augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method are about the same. Next, look at the right figure. The number of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method are fewer than that in penalty method. And as the program size gets larger, augmented Lagrangian method has advantage over penalty method. At this right, I'll show the result of traveling salesman program. The objective functions and the constraints of traveling salesman program are expressed like this. Comparison was made by varying the number of cities. At programs of four cities and eight cities and 16 cities, we generate 10 random programs. On the other hand, programs of 48 cities and 127 cities are TSP lib programs. Look at the left figure. The objective functions in augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method are about the same. Look at the right figure. The number of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method 
are fewer than that in penalty method in many cases. At this slide, I'll show the results of quadratic Simon program. The objective functions and the constraints of quadratic Simon program is expressed like this. Comparison was made by varying the number of places. At programs of four places, eight places, and 16 places, we generate 10 random programs. On the other hand, programs of 30 places and 60 places are QAPD programs. Please look at the left figure. The objective functions in audio Lagrangian method and penalty method are about the same. Next, look at the right figure. The number of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method is fewer than that in penalty method. And as the program size increases, the number of updates of hyperparameters increases as well. Finally, this is summary of my presentation. Our goal was to examine the performance of augmented Lagrangian method for symmetric annealing including programs with complicated constraints. In order to achieve this, uh, we compared the number of updates of hyperparameters and the objective functions until we obtain a feasible solution. As a result, the number of updates of hyperparameters in augmented Lagrangian method was fewer than that in penalty method for programs with one constraint, such as constraint random cubo program, and multiple constraints such as carbon sense one program and quadratic Simon program. The objective functions in augmented Lagrangian method and penalty method were about the same. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Questions, comments? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. So the, I remember that the so Tanahasan and Tanakasan proposed a method of the argument Lagrangian method for Cubo in AQC 2021. So I'd like to ask you, so what is the main difference? Oh, uh, Tanahashi Tanaka uh, introduced uh, augmented Lagrangian method for quantum annealing, uh, but uh, I introduced augmented Lagrangian method for symmetric annealing. Okay, so they propose a quantum annealing, and then so your presentation is applied to Lagrangian method, augmented Lagrangian method to the symmetric annealing. Yes. Okay, and the second question. So, so how do you choose the so ratio of the updating the quadratic time, namely alpha? Oh, uh, the previous slide. This, uh, this one. This one. This? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Uh, could you? Uh, could you? Uh, question uh, again. Uh, uh, my question is: So, how do you choose the alpha? Oh. oh okay. Um. Uh, oh. In this case, uh, I choose uh, the alpha is uh, so one point one. Yeah. Why do you choose this parameter? Because I suppose the, the so optimal alpha depends on the problem. Yeah, so uh, that is because uh, that is because uh, Tanahashi and Tanaka uh, adapted uh, the number the number uh, alpha so one point one. So I introduce the same. The value of alpha. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, so under the results you showed for the first couple of problems, the the number of hyperparameter updates for the uh, augmented Lagrangian method, they seem to be pushed at the, the point data points seem to be pushed right up against the the y axis. So I guess that's the minimum number possible of up. Uh, what value was that? Was like one or two? I couldn't really see the x-axis properly. Yes. 
So, uh, are you ask about the number for, of for example, for example, this slide. So, so yeah, they pushed up the data points are pushed up right against the the y axis. So, I guess is that zero? No, I guess it wouldn't be zero. Would it be just one update or two updates? I can't really see the what's the minimum value there. So, oh, you say the so at this 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 point. Yeah. Right? So, I'm basically asking what's the minimum value of any of those points in terms of the x axis. The what is the minimum value of the x-axis? So, uh, minimum value is that uh, the minimum one, value one, is one, uh, uh, objective functions, OK? So I'm saying I'm, I'm most of them only taking one parameter, one parameter update. Um, so, pump update. So, oh, sorry, oh, could you, uh, could, could you uh, again? Maybe, maybe I've, maybe I've misunderstood. Uh, yeah, 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 Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, so could you say again? Next question. So I have two questions. So on this plot, um, it seems to me that the update for the augmented Lagrangian, you need to update n terms. So shouldn't it be shown also on the graph compared to the penalty term? So in the penalty method, you have like, just one parameter you're updating. Uh, but uh, in yes. augmented Lagrangian method, you have n parameters. That, so it scales with the system size. So each update kind of scales linearly with system size. So I don't know whether it's shown in this figure here. Also, um, so you say, uh, are you ask uh, regarding so the scale, scaling of the program? Yeah, so I'm wondering whether it's a fair comparison just to put the number of updates without considering the cost it takes to obtain one update for each method. So, uh, So, is this data? Yeah. So, uh, so the 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 edge rate uh, choose the uh, array zero and variable one and variable one and so we choose we choose this one. Oh. Okay, maybe I'll oh, go to sorry. my second question. So my second question was like, do you think for the penalty method you could do some sort of transfer learning on the system size? Like you showed on your flow chart that the bottleneck of the method is when you do SA, you need to do SA for each update. So can you train can you update your parameters on a very, very small system size and then use those parameters for a larger system size only for the penalty method because it doesn't scale with the system size? You think it's going to work? So, uh, I. Um, uh, I, I don't know the relationship of the the system size changes. So, uh, okay, thanks. Oh, thank you, Alpecia.
So we, we move on to the next talk. Let's thank Ika again.